Hello, everybody. My name is Ray. Welcome to the Evangelical Dark Web. Today, we'll be diving into James McDonald and the corruption going on in the North American Mission Board. Now, I've had a large Southern Baptist focus lately, and that's because they have a convention going on next month. And one of the goals, I think, in that convention should be to remove Kevin Ezel, he is an extremely corrupt figure, and he needs to get removed. He is extremely corrupt, and we'll be going into that and how he was funding the church planting operations of James McDonald. Now, a quick overview on who James McDonald is. Uh, if you're familiar with Mark Driscoll, James McDonald is basically not the same exact person, but they're very close in their faults and scandals. James McDonald was uh, pretty much canned from being the CEO of Harvest Bible Church, which is a church in the, like, the Chicago area, back in 2017. And he was fired basically for a litany of things. There's a lot of warning signs. Again, this is like Mark Driscoll and Mars Hill Church. So there's a lot of similarities with these situations and we don't really have time to go over that for this video because this video is focusing on how despite all these warning signs, Nam was funding James McDonald. So that's the purpose of this video. So Nam was so uh, James McDonald was fired from being the CEO of Harvest Bible Church in 2017. I believe it was September was the month. But in February of 2019, he was finally fired from being the pastor of that church. If that sounds weird, it's because it is. So they basically just said, hey, you can still preach, but you can't uh, run the church. Basically what they did. And that's weird. So we're going to be going over... Um, some material and some evidence from uh, Reform Nam now. But first, we're going to take a trip down memory lane and an article that did not age well, and it was written by none other than Ed Stetzer. And Ed Stetzer is a theologically liberal church growth hustler. Like, this guy is in the grift for growing churches and obviously he's theologically liberal and this article was originally published in Christianity Today which is not a Christian publication and it was republished with permission on NAM North American Mission Board's website which is where we'll be viewing this article today. And the article is titled, The Southern Baptist Re-Emergence in Church Planning, which kind of sounds like a playoff of the emergent church. And they published the date. Uh, the date was August 28, 2017. So that's like right before um, uh, James McDonald was uh, fired from being uh, the CEO of a church. So, written by Ed Stetzer, who's not your friend. I just want to emphasize that. So, uh, I want to start right here. This is a brown-nosing article. Like, Ed Stetzer is a complete brown-noser here. So, let's read his words. But with new leadership, Kevin Ezel simply continued on one path for a long time, the church planting path. He was not without stumbles, but he set the organization on a path that said they would focus on planting and be the best at it. The national decisions began to influence state conventions to raise their game. Everyone began to lift their levels of excellence and to be more intentional towards church planting. Now, what Ed Stetzer is trying to say is that the church planning within the Southern Baptist Convention was crap before like the year tw 2002. So before that, he says that it was a crap uh, system of church planting. And I got to push back on that because, you know, again, I grew up in a church that was a Southern Baptist church that was planted in the mid 
80s when he says that there was no good church planning system. And, you know, they seem to have done quite well for, you know, being planted in a time when Ed Stetzer says they shouldn't have been able to succeed. Or, you know, so... Also, we also need to point out that what exactly is so good about church planning with the North American Mission Board in, you know, uh, 2017 when this was written, as we, yeah, I've shown data charts where there's a massive decline in church plants, but a massive increase of like 500% in the cost per church plant. So there's a lot more money going in and fewer church, church plants coming out. So how exactly is that good? Randy Adams, last year when running for president of the Southern Baptist Convention in a campaign that never uh, got to see the convention because they canceled it last year, basically made the argument that in order to have, you know, we need more missionaries. If you, we want to reach more people, we need more missionaries. If we want to um, grow the body of Christ, we need more church plants. So his... He was talking more about a numbers game where, you know, more missionaries equals more baptisms, more church plants equal more baptisms, stuff like that. And he's right. You know, this, you know, this is kind of like McDonald's. The more McDonald's locations there are, the more cheeseburgers are sold, the more Big Macs are sold. You know, it's kind of how uh, Randy Adams thinks about sending people out to do missions. And I certainly agree with that I don't think Ed Stetzer really does because, you know, he supports the Kevin Ezel system of let's selectively favor certain church plants to get a lot of money. And that's what we're going to be talking about in this video. So I'm going to skip this paragraph and we're going to go down to the uh, today. Um, the Southern Baptist Convention looks remarkably different. Young leaders are not out of the ordinary. New ideas are being encouraged and discussed. And we are more serious than ever about seeing church planting as the most effective strategy for making disciples. Again, I definitely disagree with um, his assessment of the North American Mission Board. Uh, church planting as a profession is affirmed and encouraged. In years past, key paragraph is right here. This is a key paragraph. In years past, church planners, yeah, I, I have to say to church planners, please don't give up. Today, we are joining with the SBC because today we have people joining the SBC because of the church planning focus, including McLean Bible Church, Harvest Bible Church, which is James McDonald, who we'll talk about later, and Harvest. Uh, Harvest Church, I believe, is, is Greg Lowry, as they said. All three of these churches, all three of them, are multi-site churches. They have a franchise operation going on. And I and I don't really think the multi-site thing is biblical. I don't think it works. I don't think it's a good church polity. I don't think it's good church governance. I don't think it's consistent with the Baptist view of church governance. Nor is it, I don't, I don't think it's also consistent with the Presbytery view of church governance either. It's not biblical for a host of reasons i just listed a few of them but again this is not necessarily about that but do you think that when you give money to the north american mission board that your money should be going to fund new franchises of mega churches do you see an issue with that i i personally do i don't because when you think of people that are doing church planting, you don't think of a mega church opening up a new branch, a new location. That is not what you think of when you think about church planting. And again, all three of these are multi-site campuses. All three of these are shady dudes. Um, McLean Bible Church, and I'm not quite sure when they joined the Southern Baptist Convention that David Platt was in charge of it, so I don't want to speak out of turn there, but David Platt is certainly a shady character. Harvest Bible Chapel, James McDonald, very shady character, and I believe Greg Lowry is also a pretty shady character as well. So these are the people that they are attracting to the Southern Baptist Convention. And why are they being attracted to the Southern Baptist Convention? And it's because the North American Mission Board is willing to expand 
their franchise operation. They're willing to fund their operation. And that's why they're being lured in is because of the money. It's not because of church planning or, you know, even if it is, it's because they can get money for doing church planning on their own churches. Again, how is that? He makes that seem altruistic and it's not. It's not. It's purely, it it's, looks like it's about the money and it sounds like it's about the money. And, you know, Ed Stetzer's like, yeah, it's pretty good. It's not. So let's take a deeper dive into James McDonald and his relationship with the North American Mission Board. Now, Reform Nam now credits James McDonald's entrance into the Southern Baptist Convention with Kevin Ezel. They associate Kevin Ezel as courting James McDonald to join the Southern Baptist Convention. And when you see what the Southern Baptist Convention has done for James McDonald, you can understand why he joined. Especially if you don't view him as a yeah, a righteous teacher. If you view him as a false teacher, then it's really easy to see why he joined the Southern Baptist Convention. So he can get money for his operations. And we see that in 2017, which is when Ed Setzer wrote that article, at that time there were four, four concurrent properties that Nam owned that were connected to James McDonald and Harvest Bible Church. And we see the first one is uh, in Chicago. It was bought for 280 in 2014 and sold in 2019. This was around the exact same time that James McDonald was finally fired, fired from Harvest Bible Church. So as soon as James McDonald's fired, fired from a church, all the houses are sold. This was the last house to be sold, I think. And it was sold for a you know good profit, I guess. Uh, and then we see in uh, Elgin, or is it Elgin, purchased in 2016. They paid 190, sold it for 2099 in 2018, a year after uh, Ed Stetzer wrote that article almost. Now again in El Elgin, so this is a second house in the same uh, town, I guess. It's probably a suburb of Chicago. Uh, December of 2016, bought for 239,000, sold for 239,000. Now that, now I don't know who they sold it to. They might've actually sold it to James McDonald or someone connected to him at that price because they lost money on this church. They, they lost money on this real estate. Cause you know, when you buy a house, you don't expect to sell it for the same price that you bought it from. Now, obviously they have, um, some of the principal paid, but they also paid property taxes on it as well. So they didn't exactly make money on this one, especially when you factor in inflation. And then we see the fourth house, which is also in Elgin, 195000 sold for one seventy six in uh, October in a one year period. So in one year and give or take four months. So in like 16 months, this house lost nearly $20,000 in value. So again, these weren't even that good investments as far as like uh, Kevin Ezel trying to be Ray Kroc, if you understand that reference with the North American Mission Board. You know, these aren't even good um, numbers. So... What exactly is the story here? And the story is that the North American Mission Board is corrupt, extremely corrupt, and it's not even debatable. And I think it's pretty unethical and because I don't think most Southern Baptists realize that their money is being used to fund megachurch franchises. And that's just the real estate that we're looking at. That doesn't even include whatever what other church planting funds that they received for opening up these branches. And that's not what you think of when you think of church planning. When you think about church planning, you think about sending out a new pastor with some oversight, with some teamwork to start a new church, not helping a mega church pastor in, you know, presumably a well-to-do church 
finance an expansion of said church. That is not what church planning is about. And again, I don't think the multi-site campus is a biblical model. And it, it reeks of corruption. You obviously see the sin of partiality that James McDonald and I'll also talk about J.D. Greer because, you know, that video was already filmed, but will air after this video. Uh, J.D. Greer also received this luscious treatment from the North American Mission Board. You're seeing all these mega pastors or mega church past celebrity pastors get this luxurious treatment, this partial treatment that they probably don't get the little guy. Are they buying four houses for a little church? No, they aren't. Are they? But they'll buy four houses for a church that probably doesn't need it. This is ineffective use of funds, and it's clearly a draw, a drawing force for these uh, celebrity pastors to join the Southern Baptist Convention. This is basically free agency, where you're signing a free agent. To join your denomination. And that is corrupt. So that's what I got to say about that. Read the article on that. I'll link that in the description below. That'll have all the sources that I reference in this video. And comment below what you think about what I think. What I said. And have a blessed day. Also like and subscribe to this video. And to Evangelical Dark Web as well. And have a blessed day and I'll catch you on the next one.